This pickup is so compact and lightweight, it could be mistaken for a car. When these trucks first came out, no one realized how brilliant they were. But looking back, many car enthusiasts are realizing just how amazing some of these pickups were, making them hidden gems now. These are seven forgotten pickup trucks from the 1980s. Starting at number seven is the Dodge Rampage. This was a truck that was very different from the usual pickups. It's like they took the heart of a compact car and squeezed it into a small, nimble truck. Under the hood, you'd find a 2.2 liter engine, nothing too crazy powerful, but enough muscle to get the job done, whether you're hauling lumber or just cruising around town. Now, when we called this truck small, we meant it. Because despite being a truck, it's as light as a Mazda Miata. That's why the truck never really gained popularity. When someone's in the market to buy a truck, they wouldn't go for an option that's basically just a car, you know? Still, some people are still love this vehicle. That's because enthusiasts who are into these vintage rides see the Rampage as something special. It can be used for all kinds of cool projects, especially since you can mix and match parts with other Dodges from back in the day. Sure, the Rampage didn't stick around for too long, but it's found its fan base in retro truck enthusiasts. And the same can be said for this next pickup. At number six, we've got the Jeep Scrambler. Also known as the CJ8, this pickup was released at a time when compact trucks were taking over, and everyone was hunting for that perfect blend of ruggedness and utility. That's where the Jeep Scrambler came in, becoming available on March 25, 1981. You see, American Motors Corporation was on a mission to gain more dominance and compete with the big players like Chevrolet, Ford, and Chrysler, who were already leading in the compact pickup scene. Now, before the Scrambler, Jeep was all about the CJ7, which was cool and all, but it just didn't quite cut it for the truck enthusiasts who were starting to buy more and more. So, the Scrambler was AMC's bold move to dive headfirst into the action. But here's the thing. Despite its impressive payload capacity of 1,500 pounds and its legendary off-road capabilities, the Scrambler was a rare sight on the roads. It made up less than 2% of all Jeep CJ sales during its 43-year history. And less than 28,000 of these bad boys were built between 1981 and 1986. Back then, not everyone saw the brilliance in this hybrid of toughness and utility. But nowadays, the Scrambler has become a sought-after classic, a real gem for collectors. But let's not forget what made the Scrambler a legend under the hood. It came with either a Pontiac, 151 four-cylinder, or an AMC, 258 straight-six engine, ready to tackle any challenge. Whether you were shifting through its four- or five-speed manual transmissions, or surfing with the three-speed automatic, this truck was always ready for action. There's another truck that's just as much of a gem. And at number five, it's the Dodge D100. You probably haven't heard of this one before, this pickup, especially the ones from the 80s, is a real classic that often goes unnoticed compared to its Ford and Chevy counterparts. But trust me, it's got a lot going for it. Now, the D100 is just a slice of the larger D series that Dodge pumped out from the 60s all the way to the early 90s. These pickups went through quite the evolution, each generation bringing something new to the table. Back in the day, the early versions of the D-Series came packed with powerful V8 engines, making them real powerful known for their toughness and versatility. But Dodge wasn't content to just stick with the basics. By the time the 70s rolled around, they started throwing in some features for comfort too. Things like air conditioning and better sound insulation were featured in the third generation, making these trucks way more comfy for those long hauls or daily drives. But despite all their charm and reliability, the D-Series never quite got the same love as their Ford and Chevy rivals. But you know what? That's kind of what makes them special. They've carved out their own little niche, attracting collectors and Mopar enthusiasts who appreciate their unique vibe. Plus, there's also the special editions, like the Little Red Express. These vehicles added a bit of spice to the mix, with their performance tweaks and killer style. And speaking of style, we've got to mention this next vehicle. At number four, it's the Chevy S10 Baja. This beast rocked the roads from 1988 
to 1991. From the looks of it, it's your regular S10 pickup truck, but it's got a serious twist. The Baja edition was all about catering to the off-road crowd, packing in some serious upgrades straight from the factory. We're talking a rugged roll bar, off-road lights, and a tough grill guard complete with fog lights. Oh, and let's not forget that tubular rear bumper. You could be cruising around in something that looks like it's ready to tear up the desert right out of the showroom. The 91 models really stepped up their game, with special seats sporting the Baja logo stitched right in. But even with all its awesomeness, the S10 Baja failed to be popular over the years. Newer trucks just kind of stole the spotlight. And that can also be said for this next pickup. At number three, it's Ford Sky Ranger. This forgotten pickup is about as rare as they get. Back in the late 80s, Ford decided to change things up from their usual F-Series trucks. Despite pumping out over 150 different truck models during that decade, none of them really got people excited until the early 90s when Ford unleashed the Sky Ranger. And we've got to say, Ford went all out on this one. They handed over the reins to an external team to bring this concept to life. But despite their best efforts, the Sky Ranger just didn't quite click with the masses. And before you knew it, Ford slammed the brakes on production after making only 17 units. It's sad too, because the specs on this were really cool. It came equipped with a 4.0 liter V6 engine pumping out a respectable 155 horsepower. Paired with a five-speed manual transmission and four-wheel drive, this truck was ready to take on just about anything. Next up, at number two, is the Jeep Comanche Eliminator. Produced from 1988 to 1992, this pickup almost has it all. From performance to utility, it's no wonder Jeep fans still love it to this day. The truck borrowed some of the best features from the XJ Cherokee, like its advanced Quadralink front suspension. This not only improved ride comfort, but also gave it some serious off-road chops. And let's not forget about the leaf springs in the rear, which made it a beast when it came to carrying heavy loads without sacrificing that smooth ride quality. One of the things that set the Comanche apart was its engine options. You had AMC's trusty 2.5 liter four cylinder under the hood, but if you wanted some serious power, you could opt for the fuel injected 4.0 liter straight six. But that's not all. While we don't have exact production numbers for the Eliminator trim, one thing's for sure, these things are rare, like really rare. So of course they're highly valuable nowadays. The condition and originality of these trucks play a huge role in their value too, of course. But if you find the right collector, you could be looking at a good chunk of change. Finally, at number one, the Dodge Dakota Sports Convertible. So from 1989 to 1991, Dodge rolled out this crazy creation, and well, people were definitely surprised by it. But despite its eye-catching design, it didn't exactly become an instant hit with buyers. Under the hood, you had a standard 3.9 liter V6 engine pumping out a respectable 125 horsepower, which isn't too bad, all things considered. And when it came to colors, you had your choice of black, white, red, and later, blue. But here's where things get a bit wearied. While the Dakota Sport convertible seemed like a cool idea, sales numbers told a different story. Starting strong with 2,842 units sold in 1989, the numbers quickly dropped to just 909 in 1990. And rumors suggest even less were sold in its final year, 1991. So what went wrong? Well, it seems like the Dakota convertible fell into that category of cool concept but who's really asking for it? It was a convertible pickup, offering the thrill of driving with the wind in your hair, but it just couldn't find its audience. But hey, nowadays, people consider it a forgotten gem, so at least it's got that going for it. Now, if you wanna check out some more content on trucks, make sure to click on this next video.